Hey everyone, welcome Naveen. He is upcoming summer analyst at Goldman Sachs. So he cleared this opportunity from the off-campus one from the engineering campus hiring program. This program is currently open for 2025 pass outs and today he is here to guide all of you regarding all the rounds, how he cleared aptitude round, what was in his technical interview rounds, three rounds were there and his DSA journey and some rapid fire questions also. So Naveen, let's start this video with your introduction first. Yes. Hi, everyone. So I am Naveen. Uh, currently, I am pursuing my B.Tech in CSC AML from VNR VJIT. I am also parallelly doing uh, Bachelor of Science in Data Science and Applications from IIT Madras. I have done internship from Tech Mahindra, where I have worked on the Indus project. And uh, as a problem setter at Turing Hut, I have set and tested over uh, 10 problems. Uh, I have also mentored 60 plus juniors on uh, topics like STL, uh, data structures and algorithms. And uh, my tech stack includes Django, Flask, uh, the Mern stack, and uh, other technologies. So I have done projects like uh, Metrogeny Planner, uh, Library Management System, which helped me gain some real world experience. Okay, so first of all, congratulations for getting this opportunity. And thank you. Coming to the video. Firstly, let's discuss about a little bit about this program, Engineering Analyst Campus Hiring Program. Uh, yes, so this is, uh, I got selected in December. So this is the summer analyst uh, uh, program. I mean, this is a summer internship. Uh, currently it is available for final years, but uh, generally it is available for third and fourth years. So it is for summer uh, uh, internship. And after that, there are chances to get selected as well for PPO basically. So for the application part, you need to apply using your resume and most of the students get the application like the OA online assessment link. So Naveen, firstly, coming to your DSA journey, how you started DSA and what um, any paid courses you opted or what was your college journey? Yeah, so I have started doing competitive programming since first year. So I have uh, done questions and contests on platforms like CodeChef, uh, Lead Code and Code Forces. Uh, so I have been doing uh, competitive programming since first year. Uh, for coming to courses, I didn't take any courses, uh, paid courses as such, but mostly topics were covered in my curricular, I mean curricular, and uh, if some topics weren't covered, it was covered in IIT Madras BS. And uh, other topics I just uh, learned on my own. Uh, by absolving questions from contests. Okay, so one doubt of the students come in this area, like how to approach a question and how to clear the online assessment. So what can be the tips from your side for particularly like clearing the DSA round and the online assessment? Yeah, so if you are trying to solve a problem, then you have to mainly focus on the core idea, like. Uh, Whenever you see the problem, uh, so you have to think about what data structures or what algorithm, because the setter must have some idea in his uh, mind to set that question, right? So you have to try to uh, think about that idea, like what algorithm might uh, he have used or uh, uh, what idea did uh, he or she use for setting the problem. I think some people have problem like they solve questions before, uh, but in online assessment, they're not able to solve. So for this, what happens is that uh, people generally focus on standard questions when solving before. Like there are very standard questions like uh, uh, some questions in DP, uh, coin, uh, knapsack and all. If you solve standard questions, obviously you can't solve uh, those uh, questions on assessments because they have been set by people. Like uh, as a problem setter, even I know how to set problems. So we generally get an idea and based on that we said it's very different from the standard questions so if you are solving problems instead of focusing on standard questions you even try to do some contest questions like if you are doing lead code then go to the contest weekly contest and solve those questions so what happens in these questions is that they are not standard like uh, problem setters like uh, me they set so they have some idea that those problems are very unique. So if you solve these kind of problems, then you'll understand how you can solve different problems. And this helps a lot in the assessment. So coming to the round one of this engineering campus hiring program, the aptitude test, 
how you prepared for it and what type of questions you received in your test uh okay so coming to the aptitude round actually uh, i think many of us would have done aptitude in uh, 10th or 12th class so if you have prepared already for some other exam like ntsc or something in 10th or 12th i think uh, if you just brush up those concepts it's fine uh for people who haven't pre uh, prepared at all i think they should put some efforts uh, to uh, do topics like logical reasoning uh, quantitative reasoning and all these topics so and coming to that uh, mm. like uh, try to see some videos on youtube like how what is the aptitude and what and i think there is negative marking so be careful and just put the questions that you know instead of trying to take some risk it is better to just put the questions i mean put the answers of the questions that you know uh, so if you do this i mean uh, if you have a proper strategy like which section is your uh, stronger one and uh, like only putting the right answers i think uh, you will be able to clear the round one okay so guys coming to aptitude specifically i have prepared a placement resource pdf also the link is in the description you will get various youtube channels like career ride official and online study for you they are very good for the aptitude so you can check the description and find that pdf after the aptitude there is a one section coursework so can you tell what was in that uh in coursework mostly they didn't release any specific course in some sense like they just gave uh, general courses that are available like one course that they uh, gave like it was on coursera uh, princeton's dsa course there are two parts so that is a very famous course uh, they gave some general links and they asked us to prepare so it's like basically if you are not good at coding for technical round you have to prepare some uh, coding and also technical topics like uh, java os and all because it's a technical round after the course work there is a section of test so what kind of questions were there for you like was it only mcq or was it only dsa based so in technical round we had uh, i think there were some 10 mcqs or so and three coding questions so coding questions were easy to medium they weren't hard and uh, coming technical mcqs are important because uh, those were like some tricky math questions were there and also some other technical questions like java based and all so those were bit tricky so i think uh, you have to focus bit more on mcqs rather than coding coding was easy to medium so if you have already practiced i think that should be fine like you said tricky maths questions so what kind of questions just uh, like example if you can give uh tricky in the sense uh, i think one tricky question that i found was on pnc so as you know pnc for topic is kind of tricky so like that okay so 11 12th math and basically aptitude and then our cs fundamentals questions yes exactly okay so after the online assessment what was there like how many rounds of interviews were there uh yeah after that there were three eliminatory interview rounds so each round uh if uh each round people will be eliminated so so can you cover all of those interview rounds one by one yeah so the first interview round it was uh actually the interview rounds they weren't like uh, specific in mm -hmm. like they weren't like technical one hr one like that it was more like assessing the candidate so in first round uh, they mostly asked about like the text stack that was there in my resume and uh, uh, they asked uh, a dsa question and also some general questions they had my resume side by side so so they asked uh, about they, resume also yes they asked about resume also and don't uh, one suggestion that one strong suggestion that they gave was uh, not to put the stuff that, that you don't know on resume so if you do that and if they ask a question if you don't answer it you are done eliminated directly that will be a red flag so, basically in the resume uh, yes exactly so that was uh, emphasized very much uh, so that was round 1 and for round 2 uh, it was also like uh, yeah in round 2 what happened was they asked a dsa question and they asked about the projects that was there in my resume so they focused more on projects and 
if you also one more thing here is that if you have put some project you have to be very clear with that project so if you are not uh, i mean if you forgot just revise it it's fine uh, but if you put a project they will definitely ask very specific questions it won't be very general they uh, will go to very depth suppose uh, if i put a website uh, how did i implement a specific feature that they ask so and if uh, they are specialized in that area then you can expect more uh, technical questions so uh, be careful when you put projects and uh, if you have put some project you have to know what is there in it every feature and everything and how to implement it also so that was for round 2 and round 3 uh, for round 3 we it was more like hr not not really hr uh, it was more like uh, asking general questions it wasn't like technical or some other questions so uh, i was just asked uh, why do i like data science and such type of questions general so basically behavioral questions uh not strictly behavior but uh, it was more like general normal in some sense yeah but was after this interview like any more rounds or you received your offer letter uh so after this interview they took some time like about a week or 10 days i think and after that they directly gave a mail okay so now coming to some rapid fire questions question number 1 like is cp compulsory nowadays uh okay nowadays uh nowadays i think uh, you need not do cp like uh, as we are seeing like uh, the many people in uh, platforms like lead code and all they are just using ai and they are cheating a lot so the leaderboard is just uh, not i mean it's not that important these days so cp i i mean if you want to do it for fun yeah go ahead but if you want to do it for companies and all i i think that's that's uh, not really necessary you can just uh, do dsa uh, before like uh, if you want to be selected in company i think uh, it's better to focus on projects and before like 2 uh, 3 months start on dsa i mean do general dsa but uh, focus more on dsa before 1 month or so so i okay. think that is a better approach okay second one is are full stack projects important in the resume full stack projects uh, see it's it's like not uh, very uh, generic ones like to do list or something whenever you make a project so there should be some some kind of uh, feature that you implement like uh, front end obviously the uh, you can't tell much so the main thing is back end so in back end uh, you have to implement some uh features like suppose uh in my case i had a feature like export csv so export csv which had an asynchronous job so for that i had to implement uh polling basically to know if it is done or not so like this if people uh do these features then uh, interviewers will get uh, attracted a bit like they'll show interest and they'll ask questions on it Okay, so third rapid fire question is development or DSA? Like, which one is more important? Uh, yeah, this question, uh, development or DSA? I think you have to kind of strike a balance. I wouldn't say one is uh, very important. Like, depends on the company. To uh, to be honest, because if you are aiming for Google, uh, they will focus more on your DSA, CP culture, and all. uh but if you specifically ask for goldman sachs i think development is bit more important because in interviews they were mostly asking project questions and all there was one dsa question but compared to projects like what all features are were there and all development was more important and also when you go to the your actual role development will only be there so dev is kind of important ds is also but uh you have to kind of balance like uh because projects take i mean projects obviously take more time right uh, if you want to develop a website or something that takes a lot more time than doing dsa so you have to kind of balance in a day okay navin so this was from my side anything else you want to tell to the juniors uh so as i told uh so for aptitude round you have to like make a strategy uh and uh, try to 
be careful with the negatives. I think in uh, second round also there was negative marking. So GS has this negative marking. So you have to be very careful. I have seen some people who did more right questions than me, but uh, because they just put all everything, they just uh, couldn't qualify. And uh, coming to the interviews, you have to be confident and also uh, do some good projects and put them so that when you tell about those projects, they, uh, the interviewers get, uh, I mean, they will get interested and then they will uh, focus on it or else they will uh, not really focus much and they'll just be looking at your resume. So, okay. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Navin, for coming and recording the video. Yes, thank you.